is up. So he'll give three teens elementary pre-K infant. You know what? Anybody's welcome here at So Hills Kids, and we are glad that you chose to be here today. Now, today is going to be a fun one. It's the last day in April. It's the last Sunday in April, which is kind of sad. I really liked this month, but it's crazy to think April is already gone, and we're going to jump into a new series next week that I am super excited about. So, let's see. What have we been talking about again? Anybody? It's peace. That's right. We're talking about peace. And uh, here's the thing, is we probably all had a hard time having peace with someone, but how many of you guys have ever had somebody step in and help you have peace with another person to be a bridge between you and the other? You get it? You know, we're talking about bridges, that's the point of it. Anyways, I know for me personally, I've had that happen. I remember one time, it was years ago at a summer camp, <clears throat> I got really mad at this friend. He wasn't being nice to somebody, and so I got mad at him for not being nice to somebody, and somebody stepped in and said, whoa, 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 let's calm down, and let's talk about this. And ten minutes later, we were all dancing together and doing a conga line, because someone stepped in, and they helped me make peace with the person that I was mad at. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We've got a super fun game for you guys. We're going to go check that out, and then we're going to set up our story. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>
guys, so before we jump into the story today, let's break down what's going on here. You see, our story is going to take place with King David. Now, if you know King David, you know he's, well, kind of a big deal. You see, kings were in charge of the whole nation. So, King David was over all of Israel. He was the man with a plan. And so he was in charge of taking care of everything. And well, let's just say everyone has their ups and downs. Everybody has their moments. And King David here, well, he has one. And he gets really mad at this guy. And this guy, well, he doesn't do his best either. You see, they both end up getting mad at somebody. And we have a special someone who steps in and helps mediate the issue. And she solves a problem that could have been way bigger than it was. So let's get ready to dive into David and what he does and well, what his helper does. But before then, we've got our last verse of April with Miss Haley. Give it up for her. We're going to watch her and then we're going to jump into this. What is up, you guys? It's Haley and I am back for the month of April with a brand new memory verse. So this month we are going to be in Romans 14 19. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the brand new words and motions. So first line is so let us do all we can to live in peace. So, first motion. So let us do all we can to live, put up your houses, we're living in peace. So just bring your house from the top of your head to your chest and then we're gonna close our hands together. All right, so next line is, and let us work hard to build up one another. So, we're gonna push it together. So let us do all we can to live in peace. And let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. All right, one more time. So let us do all we can to live in peace. And let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. Great job, you guys. Bye. This story is super tense. You see, we're in a really tense moment of the Bible where David has been anointed king. He's supposed to be in charge, but Saul won't get off the throne. So David has an army and he's out in the wilderness and him and Saul are going back and forth and they're duking it out. And here's the thing. David stops. And so we're going to pick up and we're going to be in uh, 1 Samuel verse 25. And so we're going to jump into verse number two, a little bit of three. And so it says, now David moved down to the wilderness of Maom. And there was a wealthy man there uh, who owned property near the town of Carmel. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and it was sheep herding time. This man's name was Nabal. So we have Nabal. We have David, and then we have Nabal. And well, then we have Nabal's wife, Abigail who was a sensible and beautiful woman. But Nabal was a descendant of Caleb, who was crude and mean in all his dealings. So we've got three people. We've got the should-be King David, who, well, can't get on the throne because Saul won't leave. And then we have Abigail, who's, uh, it says she's a sensible and beautiful woman. And then we have Nabal, who's called crude and mean in everything he does. And so... We're going to jump down and see what happens when these three mix. So we're going to check out verse 8. And here's what happens. He says, ask your own men, and they will tell you this is true. So would you be kind to us? Since we have come at a time of celebration, please share any provisions you might have on your hands with us and your friend David. So David sends a messenger to Nabal. And Nabal, uh, David basically says, hey, we're in this land. Um, it's a time of celebration. We're supposed to be doing stuff. Do you have anything you could spare? Do you have plenty? You have wealth uh, and you have good things. Uh, like the story from last week, Isaac had plenty and he did great things. So David is hoping that Nabal will help him out. But, well, we'll see if that happens. Because David was caring for his men. But we're going to jump down to verse 9, and it says, David's young men gave this message to Nabal in David's name, and they waited for a, a reply. So verses 10 and 11, Who's this fellow David? Nabal sneered to the young men. 
Who does the son of Jesse think he is? There are lots of servants these days who run away from their masters. Should I take my bread and my water and my meat that I've slaughtered for my shearers and give it to a band of outlaws who come from who knows where? Well, that's not very good. You see, David was hoping for generosity. And well, I guess Nabal lived up to his name, crude and mean. He chose to make fun of David and his army instead of give him anything. That doesn't sound very nice now, does it? Uh-oh. Well, let's see what uh let's see what David thinks. So, here we go. Verse 14 it says, "Meanwhile, one of Nabal's servants went to Abigail and told her, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, but he screamed insults at them. These men have been very good to us, and we never suffered any harm from them. Nothing was stolen from us the whole time they were with us. In fact, day and night, they were like a wall of protection to us and the sheep. You need to know this and figure out what to do. For there is going to be trouble for our master and his whole family. He's so ill-tempered that no one can even talk to him. Ugh. Don't anybody know that? Know anybody like that? You know, they're so grumpy and you don't even want to talk to them. You see, the servant comes up to Abigail and says, Hey, these guys have been really nice to us. They haven't done anything wrong. In fact, they've been protecting us. And so Abigail has to act. And, well, let's see what happens next. So a servant tale tells Abigail, jumping down to verse 21, it says, David had just been saying, a lot of good it did to help this fellow. We protected his flocks in the wilderness, and nothing he owned was lost or stolen. But he has repaid me evil for my good. So David is not happy. David's mad. He says, I've done so many good things for him, and this is what I get repaid with? This is what happens? So, it's not looking good. But Abigail wanted to intervene. She prepared a feast for David. And so let's jump down to verse 26 and see what happens. It says, now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, as the Lord has kept you from murdering and taking vengeance into your own hand, that all your enemies and those who try to harm you be as cursed as Nabal is. Oh, okay. Well, that's different. You see, Abigail intervened. Instead of just standing to the side and letting it happen, Abigail prepared a feast, got everything together, and invited David and pretty much apologized for Nabal. She said, hey, you've been super great to us. Sorry my husband is kind of mean, but here's this. And let, let me bless you, let me give you good things and see what happens. She apologized for her husband's foolishness. And so jumping down to verse 32 and 33, said David replied to Abigail, Abigail, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you to meet me today. Thank God for your good sense, blessing to you, for keeping me from murder, from carrying out vengeance in my own hands. So she she gives David the blessing, and David says, Thank you. Thank you for stepping in because I was mad. I was so mad. I wanted revenge, and I was going to get it if it wasn't for you. And so jumping down to first number 20, nope, 35, we see. Then David accepted her present. And told her, return home in peace. I've heard what you said. We will not kill your husband. So, he's not going to take out his revenge like he wanted. So that's good. You see, because Abigail stepped in, there was opportunity for peace. Both Nabal and David wanted to duke it out. Nabal was too proud and too stuck up to give anything to David. And David... Well, he had an army on his side, and he was going to take it into his own hands. But we see Abigail stepped in. She was a bridge, and she was a mediator, and she prevented the whole fight. So, she brought peace. And speaking of peace, we're going to sing that new song we sung last week, Peace Like a River. I hope you guys like that. So, we're going to play that, and then we're going to wrap it up. So, I will see you guys after that song.
love that song. But guys, that story is crazy. Can you imagine what would have happened if Abigail hadn't stepped in? David was a man after God's old heart, and her revenge isn't part of God's plan. And Nabal might have learned a powerful lesson in sharing and caring for others. You see, Abigail made a huge difference by just stepping in, by being a bridge between others. So I want to ask you guys this question. How can you be a bridge maker? How can you make a difference to those around you? What can you do? How can you be kind? How can you share words of kindness? How can you build a bridge between two people who might not be doing well together? So think about that this week. Think about ways that you can show love and kindness. Think about ways you can help others join together. You guys rock. I will see you guys next week with our first lesson in the new series. We're starting up May and I am excited. We've got five weeks next month. So it's going to be great. I will see you guys there. Bye.